Gada Badawi. I am a principal research engineer at Computing Infrastructure Research Center, Sirka McMaster University. Hi, I'm Shovik Pal, and I'm also a principal research engineer at Computing Infrastructure Research Center at McMaster. So Computing Infrastructure Research Center is a very unique, um, newly uh, established research center at McMaster. It's unique because um, it's a uh, first of its kind and probably the only research center which focuses on uh, innovating data center technologies, so be it power, cooling, or other cyber infrastructures which supports the cloud, right? So no uh, talk about uh, big data, be it AI, uh, machine learning is complete without discussing the infrastructure that powers it. So we look at that infrastructure and we say how we can make that better. So that's what pretty yeah. much we And I think what's unique about it too is there, there's a lot of collaboration. So we have multiple disciplines in the research center. So we have people from mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, computer science. So we were able to uh, like uh, bring down the silos that usually exist in a university research labs yeah. and have all of these people work in one space together to innovate on uh, different technologies that can help data centers get to the next step. We have multiple professors from the university who work with us and we are the research engineers, we all, work, we all hold PhD and then we work with graduate students who are masters and PhD PhDs students. and sometimes even undergraduates. And sometimes in the summer we have undergrad students who would do like a four month uh, project with us. And what's beautiful about that is that uh, we co-locate with a startup company. This is also a unique model of university industry collaboration where the first year students get to sit on sales calls, which is almost unheard of. This way, they actually see value for their work, like something they're working on is actually impacting people's lives directly. So I think that kind of an experience we are able to provide to our students, uh, we, yeah. we, we're quite proud so of it. All of the projects that we work on are industry funded. So uh, we start with a, like a problem in an industry or a pain that one of, of our partners have and we try and solve that. I think we have up to 12 partners now. Yep. Uh, and then our financial model works like for every a dollar a partner give us, we tap into uh, Canada's like government grants Federal and government, funds. Uh, sort of yeah, so uh, that, gives us a lot of that gives us a lot of leverage, right? So um, I think that's also, as, as Shuvik said, this is very unique about us, that we're very industry focused. So we, of course, we do a little bit of blue sky uh, research, as they call it, especially for the PhD students. But for most of our projects, we're very industry focused to solve an industry pain. We have co-located with a startup company. Mm -hmm. And that startup company uh, basically provides us insights into industry's pains from a much closer level. Uh, because we co-locate, we work on problems in the data center space on a daily basis and that like helps us to go from an idea to a prototype like maybe in a scale of a few days to a week so that's what that helps us an interesting project i'm working on is autonomous monitoring in data centers so what we're doing is that we're building uh, wireless sensor nodes uh, for environmental uh, uh, monitoring of a data center a temperature humidity pressure vibration and sound so what we do with that is all the information from the sensor are, coll are, are collected and we're not just collecting the information and sending alarms and notification we're actually taking it to the next step where we have built some machine learning algorithms that would predict what's going to happen next so it will tell you okay uh, there is a cooling unit that's going to fail it looks like it's going to fail so maybe you should ma uh, provide some maintenance for that so i think um, like th this takes it uh, like uh, takes it up a notch and make use of all. So today in the most uh, most of the sessions we attended, they said, you know what, 92 or 99 up to 99 percent of the data that's collected that is not being used. It's not being used right so, now. So yeah, right now what we're doing is that we're trying to use all of the data that we're collecting. What I am working on right now is um, is an adaptive thermal management system for data center. Uh, one of the issues we often come across is that cooling uh, infrastructure in data center often consumes almost 40% uh, of energy that uh, supports the uh, data center. So how can we make this better? And one of the ways we, we can make it better is to 
follow uh, the, the load, the heat load demand very closely and regulating the cooling capacity accordingly. Um, but that's very difficult if you look at just traditional uh, air handler or crack based um, cooling systems. It's very difficult to do that. And also you cannot regulate or just uh, distribute the cooling locally because it's air, it's all over the place. So what uh, we have been working on is a whole new architecture which uh, involves locally delivering cooling to rack level. And one example of that is um, uh, a rack mountable cooling unit that looks like a server, let's say a 2U server, that you can mount in any 2U available space. You can use it to build uh, a single rack solution for new or even retrofit old data centers where you have some space, just put on one of these units. Yeah, for hotspots. For hotspots management, mm -hmm. yes, absolutely. The DCD is pretty much, to me, it's the, the forum of all the, all the leading minds, the bright minds and the visionaries who wants to bring about a change in, the, in the how we look at data centers today. Because I think uh, if you look at previous century, the bridges, the highways, these were the infrastructure of our previous century. Now it's the data center. How well we innovate in this space will define how, how much progress we make as a, as a community, as a nation. Um, so, so it's very important and DCD brings about all these ideas and, and gives this uh, platform for brainstorming uh, you know, novel concepts. Yeah, and I, I think, think like one thing um, that was very useful today, the session that we attend, so we can hear the leaders in the space, what, what are they, they thinking of, what is on the roadmap, uh, is, what we're, is our roadmap matching to theirs? So today the, a lot of people were talking about talent and how that in the next five to ten years we're going yeah. to have a lot of jobs in Canada but we're not going to have the talents to fulfill, fulfill just these jobs. As part of a university we, we are working on that aspect. We are we're training, we're training the talent, today, right? We're to prepare that workforce yeah, for Canada. The masters and PhDs of tomorrow, we're training them for, for today, today and we knowing what the roadmap of these companies and these leaders have in, have in mind, we can tra train them properly so that they fit the, these positions when they graduate. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, one obvious way to do that would be to encourage more women. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. I was attending the Women in, Te in Technology session earlier that you had today at, T at DCD. And uh, we try to do that very much at McMaster. So Faculty of Engineering at McMaster is a very big advocate for women in engineering. Uh, at Mac University of McMaster, we have a lot of uh, summer camps for uh, boys and girls included, but they're run with the, by the Faculty of Engineering, by students in the Faculty of Engineering. So the kids, when they go to the summer camp, they get hand-on experience and they find how STEM is exciting and nice. So actually, it's very personal for me because I have a daughter and I sent her to one of these camps last summer. And before she went, she was like, no, I don't really like math. I don't think I want to go into engineering. But when she went and she understood, she had this hand-on experience. She built uh, structures where water flow from one place to another, did some soldiering on some electronics. She came back home and That's she's beautiful. very excited about engineering. And it totally changed the tone of the conversation at home. So uh, we are trying to do our part. Uh, we, we, when we do the hiring for uh, graduate students, we try to have this kind of diversity. We also have the, this diversity in the number of professors that are uh, participating with us in the in research the center. center. Yep. Yes, and as you can see, I am a woman. I am one of the lead, like one of the lead research in engineers the in the center. Yeah. So it's so exciting. Yes, it is so exciting.